What makes film posters so breathtaking? Are we missing some secret sauce as designers? Let's find out. Yes, stop using Google to search for posters. The results produced are garbage, low-res extracts from blogs and third-party websites. Instead, use impawards.com, a directory that stores high-resolution images of film posters dating all the way back to 1912. The benefit of this website is that it will allow you to finally appreciate every single detail of a film poster in full screen. This really defines the most critical aspect of designing to industry standard, because higher working resolution equates to bigger opportunity for distribution. Film companies love to place marketing material on printed billboards, digital monitors and skyscrapers. With a high resolution image and modern upscaling, Designs will hold their sharpness when viewed from their minimum distances. And if you use vectors across the whole project, you can scale up infinitely. Learn more about these settings in my video about the five underrated features of Photoshop. Jumping right in, go to print on the top tab of the document panel. Set the canvas size to 24 by 36 inches and the resolution at 300 dpi with the color mode at CMYK. These specifications have been coming across posters coming out of design agencies which is why I recommend using them. Now, make sure to save your document to large format. You can do this with Save As and select PSB. We do this because the traditional .psd extension has a save cap of 2GB and you'll definitely cross that threshold quickly. What's most important now is that we quality control what enters our workspace. Any assets under 50% of the original document size, 12 by 18 inches, shouldn't be used as they won't match the sharpness level of the bigger picture. Of course, if you know that you have no choice or you're positioning that asset in a small area of the poster, you could get away with it. To deliver excellence, you should strictly work with smart objects whenever you can and rasterize them upon completion, as this takes a lot of pressure off your CPU, prevents lag and drastically improves saving times. Trust me, you want to do this. The same applies to text objects, except this time try and keep them in the original text format. A great film credits font to use is Universal Accreditation. It's a free, tall and thin font that replicates the same effect you see on modern film posters. With that out of the way, design in whatever way you want. Following a layout that's commonly used in Hollywood isn't a bad idea since marketing agencies have literally spent billions of dollars researching what converts everyday people into consumers by simply glancing at a work of art. Of course, their dollars also pay for absurd visual reinforcement in places we're likely to be, but I think you get the point. Once your design is ready, exporting to PDF is widely accepted by most printing companies and doesn't jeopardize the quality. Always print a sample so you have time to make adjustments for the final output. I wanted to bring up the poster from the 2020 film Bad Boys for Life because it's one that really bothered me during its release period. When I look at Martin Lawrence's face, it doesn't look real, in contrast to Will Smith who still looks like himself. This is obviously a CG render or a detailed vector painting that was created to make upscaling easy. This is the international poster out of only four that were made for the film. Likewise, this white poster also resembles the same traits, where the colors look flat. We can learn from this because it was likely a stylized, cost-effective choice by the studio. It does make me wonder how this got approved when the company also produces art like this, this, and this.